Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day four of the Past Master series. The uh, painting that I'm doing a study after today was by John Francis Murphy, and it had the title of Autumn. And I, if you follow this channel for any length of time, you'll know what a huge, huge fan of John Francis Murphy I am. I've done, I've done studies after all his best paintings, and now I'm getting into maybe some of his second-tier stuff. Um, the interesting thing about this particular study is he kind of did this sort of grayish quality in the trees. It wasn't very contrasty, and initially I was tempted to go well heck with this I'm gonna do it the way I would do it but then I thought nah I think I'll I'll go after what John went after which uh, got me kind of thinking about doing these studies in general and one of the uh, the things that I personally do when I'm doing a study after a master is I do my best to make it look like they're painting I don't um, I, I, I should say I do my best to make it look like my version of their painting but everything in their painting that I could perceive as being good and worthwhile any quality it had whether it was a certain tonal quality whether it was a certain maybe glowing quality or a way they handled colors or of course things like composition and stuff are going to be there I try and get that across to the best of my ability and uh, this is part of my learning, part of my uh, exercise in doing these studies. And as I've stated in the past, uh, doing these studies has really, really improved my work. And I recommend it very highly to uh, those of you out there that are trying to get better at painting is, uh, you know, grab a few images from some painters that you think are amazing and uh, do a version of their work. In my case, uh, I do little five by sevens because I'm not really that interested in aping uh, them stroke for stroke. I just want to get the juice. I just want to get the good stuff. I just want to grab the soul of what they did. And uh, speaking of that, I mean, when I was a professional uh, commercial illustrator for 13 years, I was often required to uh, duplicate the styles of other artists and uh, what I always did was went for the soul of it and I went for the meat of it the juice not the surface you know now the surface uh, you could go well he does a slash slash here or he does a impasto there or he does a whatever you know it's not about the surface you want to get you got to get a level below and uh, to really get inside the head of the other artist and that brings me to this uh, video I saw today. I want to give this guy a plug. I mean, although, gosh knows, he's had like 37,000 views on his little video there. But uh, it's called The Greatest Secrets of Painting and Art. It's on YouTube. And it's shaped for art. And uh, at first I was like, yeah, give me a break. Secrets of Painting. But that was, you know, that's his little grabber title. And... Uh, uh, but he, he went on to outline the actual secrets of uh, the masters, which is that they worked really hard. <laughs> and uh, and he, really, uh, he also outlined a really great process of, you know, maybe taking the work of a master and comparing it to your own and seeing where you're falling short. And even making p possibly a list of where you're strong and where you're weak. Like you might be very strong with color, but weak on drawing. And he said, well, then you should, you know, probably concentrate on your drawing to try and get it over into the other column. And amazing advice, great advice. And this guy was very young. He looks like he's in his 20s. So good on him. I haven't seen his actual painting. I think there's something on the... Uh, monitor of his uh, in the background that uh, looks sort of interesting but i didn't have time today to really get in and, and check his work out but it hardly even matters what his work looks like because his advice is dead on dead on and uh the the one the one caveat i would always put put across uh when um doing studies after the masters or 
or trying to learn from the masters uh, by comparing your own work to them is don't just pick one guy you know pick several guys uh, let's face it my favorite uh, painter uh, by a good long ways is George Ness. on this channel you will find probably 35 to 40 studies I've done after Ness paintings but I've also done lots of studies maybe 17 to 20 after John Francis Murphy and another oh dozen or so after uh, Charles Warren Eaton and then maybe 11 or so after Camille Corot so um, pardon me one minute had to uh, blow my nose there was feeling a little stuffed up didn't think you'd want to hear it um, anyway and then a bunch of other guys uh, you know if I uh, the neat thing is is that you know if I saw a painting I thought oh I can do a study after that and um, you know there's pluses and minuses to it I mean uh, one of the minuses is that it's time I'm not spending doing one of my own paintings uh, but the plus the pluses kind of outweigh the minuses in that it's going to um, probably improve my painting more so than me just doing another painting the way that I do paintings although I do make moves and changes there and in fact I have to say this year uh, 2017 I've made quite a few positive changes in my work um, it doesn't really uh, there's a lot of things that if I'm doing a study after John Francis there's thing John Francis Murphy there's things John does that I would never think to do and so sometimes in the process of doing those things you go oh well that's clever or that's a good idea or that's a unique approach to uh, color or composition or to to whatever it is and uh, um, it's just going to broaden you and strengthen you and make you a better painter and at the end of the day that's what it's all about and uh, another thing this guy Schaefer already pointed out is not just about time sometimes you can make big big improvements just with insight so it's really more about uh, applying yourself to what you're going after in a focused and intelligent way um, you know and you've heard me uh, go on and on uh, at length about uh, taking uh, a lot of time to paint and painting a lot but that's in conjunction with with learning and improving you don't just want to keep doing the same thing over and over again that's not how you improve you need to try different things out and work with different things but you also need to do it a lot in my view I don't think uh, you can look at a million videos here on YouTube and read a dozen books and get a bunch of insights but it at the end of the day if you're not actually putting the uh, the brush on the canvas it's not really going to add up to much for you in my view you need to follow through you need to work too and uh, in some cases that might mean drawing actually I mean it might be very valuable to do um, drawings after the paintings of masters too or value studies or uh, if, uh, if drawing something you're weak on maybe go out in nature and uh, and actually do some detailed drawings of trees and things you know <laughs> pardon me anyway um, we've got about uh, two or three minutes left here past master put one up I think it was a Charles Appel uh, a few days ago I'm not on a rigid schedule now you may have noticed um, in fact there won't be a video up on YouTube uh, as of yesterday um, but uh, that's how it goes now if you do need a fix you need something from me every day uh, you can follow me on Instagram that's at tonalist painter on Instagram those videos however are one minute long and I don't even really bother to talk on them so if me talking to something this irks you or something then you could tip on over to Instagram you won't have to deal with that uh, or you could just mute the sound yeah that's how I see it um, I do like to talk though and uh, I do like to share my insights and um, it's not completely one-sided I, I do get emails from a lot of you and uh, um, I really appreciate that it's always awesome to hear from other people that are interested in landscape painting and especially tonalism uh, you know this movement in art that uh, that I think is so important and awesome you know it's it's largely forgotten so 
lot of what I do is uh, to try and promote it, try and get it uh, the attention it deserves. That may or may not ever happen, and, and really that's not, you know, that's neither here or there. It's really um, something I'm passionate about, and, and that's enough to, to tell you the truth. It has to be enough because uh, I can't force the art world to stand up and acknowledge these uh, geniuses. Or, or even acknowledge my own work to a large degree. All I can do is do the work and do the videos and uh, the people that uh, dig it, dig it, and the ones that don't, uh, they're gonna go watch a Bob Ross video or something, I guess. <laughs> and not that I'm dissing old Bob Ross. I've got some uh, DVDs of his, and uh, I like watching Bob, you know. I can't say I call that great art, but uh, it's not so bad. Bob's not so bad. Actually, a lot of what came after is what's bad. You know, a lot of the the speed painters that he influenced are just uh, I don't know. It's thrift. It's, some of it's just thrift store art, I guess. Which you know, again, fine, good. You want to do thrift store art? Go ahead. There's a market for it, I'm sure. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining me, uh, John Francis uh, Murphy. Also, thanks you, I'm sure, from beyond this mortal coil and uh we'll be back again and uh when we do come back uh uh we'll bring you another video and meanwhile please do me a favor and take really good care of yourself and stay out of trouble <laughs>